Hi all, Saren over here and I'm back again with another video. Following on from one of my most successful YouTube shorts, the top 26 rarest mount drops in under one minute, I thought I'd start a new series about the World of Warcraft mounts that you can farm every week. To kick off part one in this series, I've decided to start off with this video that details 17 different World of Warcraft mounts from the classic vanilla release, the Burning Crusade expansion, and the Wrath of the Lich King expansion. All of these have a chance to drop every single week on every single one of your characters. Now, you might already have some of these mounts, and a huge congratulations to you for either persevering until it dropped, or for simply having the look of the RNG gods on your side. If you don't, then it is time to put some effort in and slash beg these raid and dungeon bosses for these mount drops. Some of them you can actually get guaranteed first time if you do the encounter correctly. If this video is a success, I want to make four more parts to complete this series. So if this does help you in any way, shape or form, then please like the video. And if you're not already, please subscribe to the channel as well. And more importantly, if you get any of these mounts, please leave a comment down below to let everyone else know that it's worth their time. So the first mount I wanted to cover is Rivendare's Death Charger. So coming from the last boss in Strathome, Rivendare's Death Charger drops from Lord Atreus Rivendare. To get there, you need to go to Eastern Plaguelands in the Eastern Kingdoms of Azeroth. There are two entrances to this dungeon, so make sure that you maximise your time here and go to the East Wall Gate at 43.18. This is also called the Service Entrance and it will port you directly to the Gauntlet part of the dungeon. Work your way through the dungeon, killing all of the bosses, and enter each building to destroy the crystals, otherwise you won't be able to activate the last boss area and you'll have to run all the way back. Now, these four mounts have a very high drop chance and you might only need one or two weeks to get them. The blue, the red, the green and the yellow Quaraji battle tanks are part of the Temple of Ankaraj in the southernmost part of Silithus. One mistake you don't want to be making is entering the wrong raid as there are two entrances very close together. Make sure you use the right entrance at 24.87 and you're not entering the ruins of Ankaraj. Once in there you'll see that these mounts are slightly different in that they can only be used within the Ankaraj raid and don't actually drop from the raid bosses but actually from the trash mobs here. So one or two full runs should net you the full collection of the blue, the red, the green and the yellow Karaji battle tanks. Next. We move into the Burning Crusade expansion and head to Outland. We need to go to Agundun in Terracar Forest, which is located just south of Shathra City, and head to the Sethek Halls. This is the Eastern Moat dungeon located at 44.65. Make sure you have your dungeon difficulty set to heroic here, and you'll want to make your way through to the second last boss, Anzu, who drops the Raven Lord mount. Once you've killed him and hopefully gotten the mount, just keep going through the dungeon and you'll get a shortcut back to the entrance. Little tip, from here you can head straight back to Shathra to use the portals to get to our next mount drop. From Shathra, you need to take a portal to the Isle of Queldanus. From here, you'll need to head to the Magister's Terrace Dungeon at 60.30 in the northeastern part of the island. Follow the path up the hill for the entrance. Just make sure that your dungeon mode is set to heroic mode and work your way through the dungeon killing all bosses until you get to the room with the final boss, Kael'thas Sunstrider. Try to avoid the mobs in front of him, as this can trigger a bit of an unskippable roleplay, so try to avoid that if you can, because you'll waste a bit of time. Even if you do skip, you will roleplay for a while, but with a decently geared level 70, you should one-shot him and stop half of the boring fly and roleplay part of the fight. Next up is one of my favourite mounts, the Fiery Warhorse. To get this mount, you need to head to 46.73 in Deadwind Pass in Eastern Kingdoms in Azeroth and enter through the main entrance at the front of the building. You'll want to head to the room on the left and follow it round until you see a horse called Midnight, which starts the Atiman the Huntsman encounter. It should be a fairly simple fight for any level 70. One of the rare amounts in the game, the Ashes of Alar, drops from the final boss of the Eye in Tempest Keep, Kael'thas Sunstrider. Yep, the very same NPC that we encountered earlier in the Magister's Terrace dungeon. To get to this raid, you have to fly to Cosmo Wrench in Outland and enter the raid at 62.73 in Netherstorm. You can skip all of the side bosses and simply kill Alar before heading up to the Kael'thas Sunstrider area and defeating all of the NPCs and legendary weapons. 
This encounter is heavily role played, so don't worry if it takes a little longer for the fight to actually start than you're used to. Once you've gotten through the role play, you should easily kill him and with luck loot one of the coolest looking mounts in the game. Moving into the third expansion of World of Warcraft, Wrath of the Lich King, we head to Borean Tundra in Northrend and more importantly to the Eye of Eternity raid in Kaldara at 27.26. Yeah, we can get the Blue Drake and Azure Drake in 25 man heroic from the last boss, Molygos. This is a fairly quick raid to run, especially as a caster, but the drop rate on Blue Drake does seem significantly higher than the Azure Drake and I'm not saying this because I don't actually have the Azure Drake yet. One thing that does confuse people is how to loot during the fight, so once you've completed the fight, you need to click the red chest at the end of the encounter called Alex Straza's Gift, and the goodies are contained in there. Getting the Grand Black War Mammoth once required your faction to be in control of Wintergrasp PvP area in Wrath of the Lich King, but this has now actually changed which makes it much easier to access. You just need to fly in through the open door if the opposite faction is in control. To farm this mount, you just need to head to Wintergrasp in Northrend and fly to the Vault of Archivon raid at 50.72. If it's your first time here, I'd recommend setting this to 25 man heroic and running into and kiting all of the bosses together all the way through to the final boss for a simple achievement called Called Earth, Wind and Fire. You get this for killing three of the bosses within 60 seconds of each other. This will also make looting easier at the end as all the bosses have a chance to drop this mount. Now I did mention at the beginning of the video that some of these drops are guaranteed first time and this goes for the Black Drake and the Twilight Drake. Head to Obsidian Sanctum which is located under Wormrest Temple in Dragonblight at 59.56 and complete the achievement, the Twilight Zone 25 player, by setting the raid to 25 man, going in and slapping Sothron without approaching any of the other bosses. Literally just one shot that boss, and this achievement will actually trigger. It's needed in order to drop the Twilight Drake. The annoying part though is to get the Black Drake, which drops from the exact same encounter, you have to do the 10 man version of it, so it might be worth doing this on an alt this week. Heading to Icecrown Citadel in Northrend, this is where we need to go to face the Lich King who drops Invincible, the mount that is sought after by many, many mount collectors, including myself, due to its horrible drop rate. To get to Icecrown Citadel, you need to fly to 54.86 in Icecrown in Northrend and enter through the main entrance. Unfortunately, you'll have to clear the entire raid unless you're looking to save in a raid lockout, but as far as I'm aware, there is no skip to the final boss. Add to that the excessive roleplay that does happen when you encounter the Lich King, which is cool the first time you see it. It means that this can take a little bit of a while. Still though, the 10 man and 25 man have some very nice transmog items you can get whilst farming for Invincible. One of the rare amounts, Mimiron's head, doesn't actually drop from Mimiron in Ulduar, but actually from yogg -Saron. To get to the Ulduar raid, you need to head to the Storm Peaks in Northrend, and head north to 41.17 for the raid entrance. Like Invincible, we have to clear the raid to get the Yogg Saron, so farm this on a character who can move quite easily, such as a druid or a mage. If it's your first time soloing Yogg Saron, you might be confused as to what to do during the portal phase. Simply click on a portal and kill the targetable yellow NPCs until the door to the brain opens up. Kill it, exit, and then complete the fight. The loot is contained in a chest right at the entrance. Last but not least is my personal favourite mount from Wrath of the Lich King, the Enixian Drake. I personally farm this weekly on 15 alts every week for over a year, as I absolutely love this mount. A guild he did return after 6 years of not playing World of Warcraft, decided to try it, and also did it first time. So, you know. But if you want to test your luck, then you need to head back to Kalimdor and down to Dustwall or Marsh. If you have the flight pass, fly to Mud Sprocket, and then to 52.75 for the Enixian Lair Raid to slay Enixia herself. Just simply go in, tag the boss, and a gear to level 70 should one-shot the boss once the RP is out of the way. Just bat the pesky whelps away. And that's it. A video of 17 weekly World of Warcraft mounts to farm. As always, if you found the video helpful, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell as well if you don't want to miss out on any upcoming videos. Let me know in the comments section below if you have any questions or if I've missed anything such as any skips, etc. Any knowledge is great knowledge. And in the meantime... Take care, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next video.